Today's video is brought to you by Morgan & Morgan, America's largest injury attorney law firm ready to fight for you. When dealing with the consequence of injury, sometimes it can feel like you have no options and that receiving proper compensation just isn't plausible. But Morgan & Morgan is here to fight for you. Did you know that proper representation from a lawyer is said to gain on average three times more compensation than fighting a case on your own? With 800 attorneys in 49 different states covering a major range of specialties and expertise, Morgan & Morgan will fight to get you the compensation you deserve. And the best part, Morgan & Morgan operates using a no-win, no-fee basis to put your mind at ease while you focus on getting justice. If you're interested in what you hear, check out Morgan & Morgan for yourself by clicking the link in the description of this video, or using your phone, you can dial pound law. That's pound 529. Or visit www.forthepeople.com to get started on receiving the compensation you deserve. There is a bloody war going on in Philadelphia for control of organized crime. Today, the U.S. government tried to put a stop to it by indicting two dozen alleged mobsters and hauling them in. As takeover bids go, this is about as unfriendly as you can get. In the past year, there have been at least nine shootings and five dead on the streets of South Philadelphia in the war for mastery of the local underworld. Everything was quiet until the Philadelphia godfather, Nicodemo Little Nicky Scarfo, was sent off to prison for 69 years. Ever since, there's been a blood feud between Scarfo's alleged successor, John Stanfa, and some so-called young Turks led by Joseph Skinny Joey Merlino, who was wounded in one of the After shootings. After the attempt on Stanfa's life, Merlino and Michael Chicky Cinglini were ambushed outside their Greenpeace social club. Merlino was wounded, Cinglini died. Police this afternoon combed the shooting scene at 6th and Catherine for evidence. In 1993, a bloody power struggle erupted between outside their clubhouse in South Philly. Merlino was wounded. The other man was killed. On August 5th, 1993, around 1.30 p.m., Skinny Joey Merlino and another member of the Merlino faction of the Philadelphia crime family, Michael Mikey Chang Changalini, who were at war with the Philly crime family's rival faction, being led by the boss John Stanford, were walking out of their Greenpeace Social Club on the corner of Catherine and 6th Street in the heartbeat of South Philly's Mafia epicenter when a stolen white Ford Taurus being occupied by two of Stanford's foot soldiers, the driver, Philly gangster Philip Coletti, and the passenger riding in the back seat behind Coletti, ruthless Philly hitman John Vesey. According to Vesey's testimony, who later turned government witness after surviving four gunshots, two of which were execution style to the back of his head in a botched mob hit ordered by his boss, John Stanford. The two soldiers were driving by the Greenpeace Social Club looking for Joey Merlino on orders from Stanford when they spotted Merlino along with Mikey Chang and Billy Vesey, who was John Vesey's older brother, standing outside the club on the sidewalk. Being that Vesey's brother who wasn't aware about the orders to kill Merlino was with them, Instead of shooting them right then and there, they drove by and circled the block. As they turned around, Vesey's brother coincidentally started walking away from the pair. With their targets now wide open in the clear, they decided to make their move. The two men got their guns ready and cocked and made their way up the block. As they approached them, they stuck their guns out the window and began firing at them in a drive-by style shooting. According to trigger man John Vesey, it would be his bullet that struck Changalini, who put his hand up to try to stop the bullet and was clipped in his right elbow before entering his chest, ultimately hitting him in the heart. Vesey would say Chang spun around and fell to the concrete upon being hit and would try to stand up but would again fall to the sidewalk. And Merlino, who would be caught with four bullets from Coletti's gun, was said to be running back and forth, side to side, screaming for help, trying to dodge the bullets. He would only end up being shot in the leg and butt. It said Changalini died in Merlino's arms. The next clip I'm about to show is the testimony of John Vesey at Stanford's trial, where he tells the prosecutor in his own words how the hit went down. On the south side of Catherine Street. Phil said, jump in the back, and jumped in the back. Put the window down, we both shot out the window. What did you see? I see Michael Chandler, he spun around on the floor, went back up, fall down again, Joe Molino running back and forth. You were trying to. 
trying to kill George Molina. It said the reason for the attempt on Molino's life and the murder of Changolini all started in 1991 when Stanford was put in place as boss by the five families in New York and began immediately having problems with Molino and the quote Young Turks with the two factions constantly bumping heads. Stanford tried to make peace and show good faith in a way by inducting Joey Molino and Mikey Chang into the family and making Mikey Chang's older brother Joey his underboss. But despite Stanford's show of good faith, Skinny Joey, Mikey Chang, and the Young Turks, who consisted of Joey, Mikey Chang, Stephen Mazzone, George Bergese, Gaetano, Tommy Horsehead Scafidi, and Martin Angelina, continued to shake down bookmakers and loan sharks in Stanford's organization, being led by Molino, even from prison while Molino was away serving time for an armored truck robbery. One of those men being a man named Little Felix Buccino. It said Buccino went to Stanford about being strong-armed by Molino's guys, prompting Stanford to have his new underboss, Joey Chang, talk to Molino and his brother, Mikey, sending them a message to leave Little Felix alone. Molino responded to Stanford's message from prison by allegedly ordering his men to gun down Felix while he was down the road from his house while sitting in the driver's seat of his old model Buick. This is the hit that would spark the back and forth shootings throughout the city of brotherly love that would leave one brother dead, one brother paralyzed, and multiple others killed and left full of lead for the next couple of years, also landing a few men in prison for the rest of their lives. Following the murder of Little Felix, it's alleged that Stanford then ordered Joey Chang and two other men to kill Joey's brother Mikey, who Stanford believed was one of the shooters on the Little Felix hit and Joey complied with the order. On March 2nd, 1992, Mikey Chang had just finished playing a game of basketball and was walking home when he noticed a group of men following him. Chang, who was close to his house, began running and just barely made it into his house and shut his front door before three men armed with shotguns fired at the door and allegedly let shots off into his front window before fleeing the scene. Mikey Chang escaped the attempt without being hit and in the process, it said Mikey noticed one of the shooters and told others his brother Joey was one of the men who tried to kill him. Skinny Joey and Mikey Chang would keep that info close to the chest until exactly one year later. On March 2nd, 1993, around 6 a.m., three armed men in ski masks made their way into the Warfield Breakfast and Lunch Express in Gray's Ferry with plans on taking out rival faction underboss under John Stanford. Joseph Joey Chang Changalini, who was the brother of Mikey Chang, who would be killed by John V.C. months later. And the crazy part is, one of the mass shooters who was said to have shot Joey Chang, who owned the deli where he was hit, was his own brother, Mikey Chang. And on top of it, the whole hit was recorded on video from the outside and FBI audio bugs planted inside the establishment. In the video, you see Joey Chang and a waitress named Susan Luchabello, employed by Chang, pull up to the establishment at 5.54 a.m., unloading their car upon opening the store. In the next scene, you see two cars drive by the restaurant before three men, then storm the restaurant. According to the waitress, Susan Luchabello, who was the first witness called to testify by the defense, upon seeing the gunmen enter the restaurant, she ran and ducked behind the counter, after hearing the gunshots and the shooters left, she rushed to Chang's aid. Susan would be quoted saying, Joey was face down in a pool of blood. I said, oh my God, he's dead. And then he sat up. And when he sat up, blood was pouring out of his head. It said an EMT who arrived after the shooting had told Chang not to blow his nose out of fear his brain would come out of the bullet holes. Joey Chang was shot a total of five times, three of which were in his cheek, one in his right shoulder, and one more in the leg. One of the bullets that went through his cheek spiraled upwards, hitting his brain. The EMT told police Joey Chang said, quote, Tim did me, although I found no connection to a Tim in my research. The EMT also said, quote, she never seen somebody so injured who had the incredible strength this man did. It said Chang, who was shot by either a 38 or a 357 Magnum, spent hours in surgery, but would be left partially paralyzed from the shooting, and according to his brother, he can't chew gum and walk at the same time. He's now deaf, blind, and walks with a cane. 
In a Philadelphia Daily Newspaper article dated March 4th, 1993, it stated that according to police sources, Mikey Chang was a made man in the Merlino Natale faction of the Philly crime family as of 1992. And according to a street source, they were quoted saying the relationship between the brothers is not close. They're not close friends, though Michael appears to be concerned about his brother. It's also been said that the Changalini's brother's father, Chicky Changalini, who was in prison, wanted a peace treaty between his two sons' different factions, which meant he was in favor of his son Joey Chang's faction being led by John Stanford. According to the driver of the hit on Mikey Chang and attempted murder of Skinny Joey drive-by, Philip Coletti's wife, Brenda Coletti, who did an interview after her and her husband became federal witnesses for the FBI against Stanford in 1995, she told the interviewer she was fully aware of the war going on between the two rival factions and very well aware of the hit that took place against Merlino and Mikey Chang and even helped plan the hit as well as others. In fact, the white Ford Taurus that Coletti and VC used for the drive-by was rented by Brenda Coletti, a car which was ditched and set on fire after the shooting. Brenda also claimed she had meetings with her husband and other associates of the Stanford's organization and following the botch hit on Merlino, even attempted to kill Merlino by poisoning him by putting cyanide in his drink, but was stopped by her husband before she actually made the attempt. Philip Coletti and VC also made numerous attempts to hit Skinny Joey, including a remote control car bomb, which failed multiple times, and they once spoke on sniping him from across the highway and a few other incidents where they went to kill him, but each time it was called off for one reason or another. So just to give you a quick rundown and put things in order before getting into the last hit that would take place between the Molino and Stanford factions involving a drive-by on a Philly highway in broad daylight. The timeline goes like this. Little Nicky Scarfo Sr. gets locked up around 1988 and gets sent away to prison. From prison, Little Nicky tries to have his son Nicky Jr. run the family, but on Halloween in 1989, Nicky Jr. allegedly gets ran down on by skinny Joey Molino and gets shot seven times but survives as portrayed in my last video. Then Nicky Jr. goes to Jersey to lay low and ends up getting set up and sent to prison on a 30 year sentence. Then the five families in New York gives the blessing to Sicilian gangster John Stanford to take over as new boss of the Philly family. But immediately following Scarfo's imprisonment, Molino and his crew, as far back as 1987, are trying to take control of the Philly criminal underworld, extorting people and demanding kickups. But in 1990, Molino is sentenced for an armored truck robbery, and while in prison, he allegedly orders the murder of little Felix Bacchino prompting Stanford to order a hit on Joey's right hand, Mikey Chang, who he believes was the shooter in the Little Felix hit, and sends Joey Chang, along with others, to whack Mikey. But the hit is unsuccessful. One year later, the Young Turks make a move on Joey Chang, shooting him five times, although he survives the hit. About six months later, Molino and Mikey are caught lacking by Stanford's men, resulting in the death of Mikey Chang, leaving Molino hit but not dead. Which would lead to the last hit in the Molino Stanford rivalry, which takes place just three weeks after Joey is shot four times. On the morning of August 31st, 1993, John Stanford and his son Joey are riding in a gray Cadillac Seville on the Schooly Kill Expressway, heading into town on business being driven by ex-U.S. Marine and bodyguard for Stanford, Freddie Aldridge, who was on high alert following all the recent back-and-forth hit attempts. Keep in mind, it's rush hour traffic on the eight-lane expressway with thousands of commuters passing through every day, when all of a sudden, a crew of hitters pulls up alongside the car, driving in a van with portholes cut out the side to fire their guns from and start spraying the vehicle with two 9mm pistols, Swiss cheese in the Cadillac, and missing their intended target, but striking his son Joey in the back seat above his right cheekbone as he was ducking to the floorboard of the car. According to the driver and bodyguard, he pushed Stanford down and kept driving, forcing the shooters off the road, and after driving a little further and realizing they had a blown tire and his son was shot in the face, he told Freddie to stop the car, to which he responded, nobody's going to be able to help us here. So he agreed to continue to keep driving towards Stanford's headquarters, which was a warehouse right off the expressway, where they would switch vehicles and take Joey to the hospital. 
Stanford son would survive a shot to the jaw. The tit-for-tat shootings between Stanford and Molino's factions would come to an end when a few months later, in November of 1993, Molino was sent back to prison for parole violations. And then in November of 1994, Stanford is arrested on RICO charges and in 1996 is sentenced to five consecutive life sentences. Molino would be released from his parole violation in November of 1994. It's then said Merlino, being declared winner of the war, made Ralph Natale boss positioning himself as underboss in order to focus the law enforcement spotlight on Natale, while Merlino operated as the real power behind the scenes. Although all of this is just speculation from newspapers, media, and informants, being that Merlino was never convicted of any murders and never convicted of being a boss in the Philly crime family. Today, Skinny Joey Molino runs a podcast on YouTube called The Skinny with Joey Molino and denies ever being involved in any of the crimes he's been accused of by the media and law enforcement.